How you doing, YouTube? Uh, Matt Mass Beer Review is back with yet another review with this fucking guy. How's it going? Harry. Harry drinks beers every now and then. On occasion. On occasion. And I came to his house to drink a almost seven week old um, bourbon barrel aged stout. Only void. Yes, from Tired Hands. And he's like, man, I got this really cool beer. He's like, I'll drink it someday. And then, lo and behold, a couple minutes later, he goes, let's review it. And I get a, fuck it. Impromptu in the kitchen review. Yeah, and this is uh, this is a beer from uh, Barrel Souls Brewing out of Saco, Maine. Uh, it's their Stay Puff. It's a bourbon barrel aged Wood Woodford Reserve beer, year in a barrel, uh, bottle 532. It's kind of fancy when there's like a number on it. 11.5% yeah. um, Imperial Stout. Um, cool shape bottle. It's got that Italian kind of bottle kind of vibes to it. Wax top to it. I'll struggle with getting that open. And uh, yeah, super excited. No idea. Have you had, I've not had a clue. anything from this nope. brewery. Never heard of this brewery before. Label's awesome. Bottle's awesome. Everything about it is awesome. It's except numbered. Except for this wax, which is not that hard to get off, actually. Believe it or not. I think I got... Did I speak too soon on this? What's going on? Yeah, here? I'll be damned. Yeah. We'll see. <sighs> Come on, you son of a bitch. <laughs> see? Uh, what are you gonna do? So, so Maine, a Maine brewery I never heard of before making a bourbon barrel aged beer. Now we did this before once before, not in review, but last time I was here we had a bourbon barrel aged beer. We're like, oh, the label's awesome. The beer looks super cool. Mm -hmm. And then we drank it, and it was just okay. So hopefully that's not the case with this one. Let's see what the sucker has to offer. Stay puffed. This makes me think there's going to be a lot of marshmallow involved. You would hope. If they're going to call I'm it I'm thinking stable. s'more. S'more? Okay. It's black. Yeah, two distinctly different heads on it. Um, his is way more kind of bubbly up top. Pretty compact stuff. What I like my coffee to look like in it. Look how fast that head's going away. Mm -hmm. Pretty much gone completely. Dark as dark could be. I mean, what are you going to say? It's dark. Even hold up the light, can't get any color. So, let's get a nose on this sucker. Ooh, bourbon. Straight bourbon. Mm -hmm. Like alcohol stinging in the nostrils bourbon. Oh, yeah. You're getting like evaporation, like that that alcohol evaporation going on. But I am getting coconut. I'm getting actually a decent amount of coconut. I'm getting vanilla. I'm getting that kind of marshmallow yep. thing kind of vibe off yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. Not getting much beer. Mostly barrel, mostly booziness. Maybe a booze little... Booze and coconut. Booze and, booze and coconut. Yeah. What more do you fucking want? Yeah. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it, it's not a bad thing. You can tell that the barrel's pretty pronounced in it. Like I said, you're getting a ton of the coconut from the barrel. You're getting this kind of boozy bourbon that's not really all that, like, cherry or anything like that. It's more just like a kind of, like, a straight up just whiskey spirit kind of genericness for me. It, it's the smell, though. It's not like a burn. It's... Kind of yeah, 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 yeah. But that, that coconut is crazy. That vanilla mm -hmm. is crazy. That marshmallow. Now I know why they call it Stay Puff. It's almost like a beer that I think maybe they bottled it and then called it Stay Puffed rather than after actually, the fact. yeah, after the yeah. fact, knowing how much they got from it. So because it's definitely giving me that fluffernutter vibes going on here. Oh, yeah. So let's dive into this fucker. Salut. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, dude. That's straight up fucking stout and bourbon. <laughs> yeah. Booziness. I got a little heartburn going on, so it's hitting me a little harder than it usually would. But that is like toasted marshmallow. Absolutely. That is on the fire. Toasted marshmallow -ness. There's a I, smokiness to it. I wouldn't be surprised if they put something in this beer. Like they're talking about just it's a beer that is in a barrel that's an imperial stout. If they didn't add vanilla beans to this or they didn't or they added some kind of vanilla kind of adjunct to it i'd be surprised because this is not just straight barrel right. that amount of vanilla so they're throwing some kind of vanilla in there with something going on to kind of give you that kind of marshmallow fluff and or i should say just marshmallow fluff kind of vibe, that vibe to it uh, um yeah, let's see if i can take a sip without having scorching heartburn <laughs> Mm. 
It's a little thin. It's not super dense. But it's a little hot. Like I said, every sip gives me heartburn. That's just because I've been like kind of teetering on the edge of heartburn all night. Um, and I'm having a hard time just getting past that vanilla. You know? The vanilla and That's the booze. coconut for me. A lot of yeah. coconut. Yeah, like the vanilla, coconut kind of vibe. You're getting, you're getting oak, you're getting barrel, you're getting the booziness. You're not getting much cherry, just generic kind of bourbony kind of vibes. And then you're getting that kind of coconut awesomeness. Where it's, it's not like a toasted coconut in a way that like uh, morning wood, not morning wood, what's the one I'm thinking of? Lasto from Funk the Buddha is. But it's it's more of a straight up kind of vanilla kind of uh, marshmallow vibe going on. It's cool. I like it. But it's a little bit too, too adjuncty, a little bit too sweet. Like the beer is lost in there. I'm actually not tasting much beer. Right. And that's I, kind of like the bummer. Like part I said, for me, it's coconut. Yeah. I love a lot of coconut. <laughs> and bourbon. Yeah. Coconut and bourbon. And, so. it, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, you know, I want a little bit more. A I want the beer. beer. I want the beer to be there. So this is something that, you know, in a perfect world, you'd kind of just let sit. For a while, see what kind of have some of those kind of adjuncty flavors kind of round out and kind of fall out. Maybe the beer kind of comes up because even if it is, it's hot from the alcohol, but I, it's not like it doesn't drink like super high ABV. I know it sounds kind of oxymoronish. I don't even know what the eleven point five. Oh, okay. It's like it, you could tell there's like an there's alcohol heat to, it, yeah. heat to it, but it doesn't. It's not like it's not like rough. To drink, it's just very sweet. No, it doesn't burn your throat, but I, I sense it in the nose actually. Yeah, more so. Yeah, so it's a cool beer. It's just a little bit too too much not beer to be an awesome beer. But I think time would help it. And you know, next time around, I don't know if they've made this beer before, but next time around, if they maybe went like a little bit less in the barrel or, or something like that, or maybe bumped up a little bit of the hops and malt and the beer and stuff like that, a little bit more roast malt, necessarily more malt bit more roastier, a little bit more hoppier, kind of counterbalance some of that sweetness, I think it'd be pretty damn awesome. But in general, I think it's pretty fun. And it's I, I kind of wish I was able to get another bottle to throw it in the basement for a year or two. So anybody out Just there, send us a bottle so we can yeah. wait a year and drink it. So there you go. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, to talk about it. Is it one of the better barrel aged stouts I've had so late? No, because I have some killer ones. So by been a, especially the winter time, there's a lot floating around. Yes, yes. Um, so by default, it's in the outside looking in, but at the same time, I, I, I like, well, let's put it this way. First offering from a brewery, even though it's not balanced, it's a little bit herky-jerky, I still find it fun. Oh, I would definitely, if, if someone were to, you know, come and say, hey, I have this beer, do you want to, do you want it? Absolutely, I'd take yeah. it again. Or if, like, I mm -hmm. walked into a place and I saw this brewery and they had something else to offer. Oh, I pick it up. Absolutely. Pick absolutely. It up. Yes. Um, value and availability, do you have any idea what it cost? I can't remember. And it was given to me, well, I, I did pay for it, but uh, a buddy of mine went up to Maine. He did the he did the Boston tour. He did the Trillium, the Treehouse. Went up to Maine, did Maine Brewing, and then just kind of hit a bunch of random breweries and picked up and he knew I liked stouts and you know brought one back for him. He's not a stout guy, he's an IPA guy, but such a good guy. Right. Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, chime down below if you actually know what the price is availability. I assume you'd have to be up in that area to get it. I, I would imagine in the fifteen to twenty dollar range, yeah. but I'm not certain. I don't know, know so. the, those sexy curvy Italian bottles always, always make me want to go closer, a little to higher. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it definitely <laughs> wasn't thirty. Well, it well I can't say it definitely wasn't thirty because I don't remember. It was I paid them like I don't know. Two months ago, almost. So. Oh, okay. And if it was super expensive, you'd be like, man, I paid this. It definitely wasn't good. over 30. I can tell you that much. Because it was like, holy, you know. And just say, if you like what well, we like this. If you like marshmallows, if you like uh, coconut, if you like vanilla, if you like ice cream, if you like cake and candies, if you like booze. If Let's say if you m mashed up a marshmallow vanilla bean, put it in some bourbon, and then like dash a beer. It's kind of like you know that person that like makes coffee. But then it's like all creamer and sugar, and people are like you want some coffee in your right. fucking in your coffee. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that thing. It's more it's more adjunct and barrel than beer itself. But mm. for some people, that turns people on. So if that's your jam, then this will be your jam. But I will say I would drink it again. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially if I could find this same year a year later or aged in any form or fashion oh, down the road, to try just to absolutely. be like, okay, now I need to know where this beer goes because I can see this turning into something cool. I can see it go totally sideways. But at the same time, I can see it turning into something cool, which is uh, cool in itself. So there you go. Another review in the books. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did or you didn't, or somewhere in between, down there and shit. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and tap. Massive beers in all four of those places if you want to check me out. If you want to check this guy out, how do you find you? The Harry. Uh, yeah, uh, Instagram's Harry Cross. That's about it. There you I go. don't know what it is. He posts pictures of beer. That's pretty beer much and it. records. Beer that's, and records. That's, that's it. What more is there? And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hope we're enjoying a nice uh, uh, marshmallow beer right now. And hope we'll see you next time. Or some kind of a stout. There you go. Cheers. Salute. Ah.